high intensity and uh, minimalist training is uh, what we're going to call this. But in reality, um, this is just how it's done and how to get strong. So this video is not talking about hypertrophy. This video isn't a Mike Menzer hit thing. Uh, this video is going to talk about people like Ed Cohn, Doug Furnas, um, Marty Gallagher, Kurt Kowarski. Okay. Marty has written about this extensively, so please don't just take my word for it. Go read, and you'll see that all of these guys, all these incredibly strong guys, uh, basically arrive at the same place and the same training style. That's Ken Patera or whatever. Um, look at any of them, and they all do the same thing eventually. So... Yes, a lot of us started off with, uh, we didn't know any better. So we did bodybuilding style workouts, did lots of high volume. Uh, Paul Barnett did a fantastic video talking about how he tried to follow Arnold's program from you know this bodybuilding book that Arnold wrote years ago that uh, basically he got weaker from doing it. And that's a funny thing to me uh, because Arnold never did any of the programs in his own book. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of this. You've seen Pumping Iron. Arnold purposely gave out bad advices uh, to screw his competitors over and to mislead them. It was almost basically a form of psychological warfare. He would tell them, uh, you know, don't drink milk. Uh, you know, milk is for babies. I drink beer. And in reality, he drank two glasses of milk with every meal. That Arnold didn't do high volume training. Um, but in his book, that's the exact program that he gave out. Why? Because he was purposely giving out bad advices uh, to his competitors, right? So, you know, people have attempted this high volume training and they've just got weaker from it, right? And they got smaller, some of them, right? Okay. Now let's take a look at guys like Ed Cohn. Uh, I recommend, it's out there for free everywhere. I don't think it should be free, but uh, it's out there. You can find Ed's uh, deadlift program. Okay, you work up to one top set of a double and then you drop back and do your speed work. And then as this progresses, you eventually just work up to one heavy single and then drop back and do speed work. When I speak about intensity, what I mean here isn't CrossFit intensity. Like I'm going all out with 95 pound thrusters. I mean intensity in terms of the percentage of your one rep max. That is the intensity that we're discussing here. And when I talk about volume, I mean the total number of sets and reps, right? What you'll find is that, like Kirk Kowarski, for example, um, I, I can't remember if it was a Marty Gallagher article or if it might have even been an interview by Mark Ripito or something like that, um, but they talked about how he would work up to one really hard set of five, like just everything you have, one set of five, and because he only did this once a week, you spent the whole week pissed off as hell if you didn't hit a PR on it. So there was a big motivator there that you want to come in and make sure that you PR on this because if you don't, you have to wait an entire week before you get to try it again. Um, I thought that was cool. That's a nice little psychological trick to yourself there, um, but also you're forcing yourself to rest and recover. Uh, you look at Ken Patera's training. I think it's on the, uh, the tight tan slacks of... Bezos Dan, I think is the name of the blog, um, and Ken would work up to like one hard set on something. It was like one really heavy double, you know, uh, one really heavy triple, one really heavy single, okay? The reality is, is that if your intensity is high, your volume can't be high. Like that's just the way it is. So if I come in and I'm going to squat 95% of my one rep max, I am not going to do 25 reps. It's not gonna happen. And if I squat 100% of my one rep max, I am definitely not going to do even 10 singles at that. Uh, so, you know, yes, you put 75% on the bar and suddenly you can do five sets of five and it's not a problem, you'll still recover even. Um, you put 80% on the bar and do five sets of five, all right, it's a little harder workout, but you're still able to get it done. Um, you get to 85% for a set of five, 
you'd have a very hard time doing that for five sets. Uh, unless, of course, you're slow twitch, which that makes a different story here. Um, because there are some athletes who are weird like that, and so you see their one rep max is, say, just 100 kilos. You put 80 kilos on the bar, and they can do it for 20 reps. And that's not how things normally work. Those are your exceptions to the rule. And typically, it tends to be endurance athletes. So, like, if you get a runner, and you get that runner, you know, like an endurance runner, like a marathon runner, I don't mean a sprinter, um, and you get them to the point where they can squat, you know, 225, 100 kilos for a single, um, if you back them off to 80%, they will get more reps than you would ever predict from these different rep calculators. Uh, and that's because of the type of training that they do, all that endurance work. Uh, they don't have a very high ceiling, right? So their one rep max is not very high, but yet they can do their 80% for a ton of reps. Um, and a part of that is, is just, it's, um, it's a training adaptation. You know, it's like I've talked about this in the past. I could hold a six-minute mile forever. I was able to hold a six-minute mile over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, but yet my, you know, one one mile time trial was only like in the 520s. So it wasn't like I was super fast. I didn't have a high ceiling at that time because I was doing so much volume. I've talked about this in the past. Don't do this, but I used to run uh, an absurd volume, 100 to 120 miles a week of running. All it did was make me really good at running basically the same pace all the time for longer and longer distances. It didn't make me faster. It's not like it improved my one mile time. It just made me really good at holding a pace for a very long time, which, you know, um, this is why now I tell people, make sure you include your sprint work. You should be working on improving your max speed. But anyways, that's off on a tangent. Uh, but it is strangely similar to weightlifting, right? Or powerlifting for that matter. Um, if your max speed, you know, is 30 miles an hour, it's not hard for you to hold 10 miles per hour. So similarly, if your max squat is 1,000, you're not going to have a hard time squatting 225. It's, you know, we've raised the ceiling here, okay? Um, and so what you'll notice is that all of these guys, whether it was Doug Furnass or, you know, if you don't know who Doug Furnass is, you need to look that up. That's who Ed Cohn learned from. Um, or it was, you know, Kurt Kowarski or, or, or uh, is it Butch Cassidy? I think his real name was Hugh, but I think they called him Butch. Um, anyways, these guys all arrived at the same thing. They did very minimal volume, but super high intensity, okay? Um, and, you know, like I said, you should read Marty Gallagher. Uh, he has multiple articles talking about this. <sighs> Even, uh, I think his name is Brooks Kubik. He has written multiple books on how these guys would train. And this is the reality of, of how to get strong, okay? Is this the best way for you to build the most hypertrophy? Probably not. I'm not going to sit here and, and make the argument that, you know, doing one heavy single is going to somehow be the best way for hypertrophy because it just doesn't even make sense to say that. Uh, we know how this works. You, you guys are aware already. Y yes, you will still... There, there is no hypertrophy rep range. Let me say that again. There is no hypertrophy rep range. So there's nothing magical about doing sets of 8 and 12 that somehow, oh, well, that's where you make hypertrophy. But if you do a set of 5, you won't get hypertrophy. No, you'll get hypertrophy even doing singles. It's just that you won't get as much hypertrophy doing singles. Make sense? Listen, uh, Tom Platts had the biggest legs, okay? And Fred Hatfield could squat more than Tom Platt's. Fred Hatfield didn't have small legs, though. He had smaller legs than Tom Platt's, but no one looked at, no one looked at Fred Hatfield and was like, that guy looks like he doesn't lift. Okay, so he's not a bodybuilder. He doesn't maximize hypertrophy. He maximizes strength, right? Now, you could say the same thing about Ed Cohn. You ever see old pictures of Ed Cohn? Ed Cohn was fucking jacked, man. Did he look like Tom Platt's? No, he doesn't look like Tom Platt's. But no one looked at Ed Cohn and was like, ah, oh, that guy looks like he doesn't lift. Yes, he's not as big as a bodybuilder. He doesn't maximize hypertrophy. Um, but that isn't to say that doing strength work doesn't still also cause some hypertrophy. Okay? If you do sets of 10, you are not maximizing strength, but you definitely will gain strength. Listen, if you squat, you know, 135 for a set of 10, you do 10 sets of 10 at 135, and a year from now, you're doing 10 sets of 10 with 225, you got stronger. 
Yes, you've got a lot of hypertrophy there too. It both happen at every rep range. Whether you're doing fives or tens or fifteens or twenty fives, it doesn't matter. You will gain strength and hypertrophy. It's just that the more volume tends to give you a little more hypertrophy and a little less strength, and the lower rep ranges give you more strength and a little less hypertrophy. This isn't like some kind of binary where it's black and white, like, well, this is hypertrophy and this is strength. No, you're always gaining both, okay? My point here being, though, if you look at the guys who are really crazy fucking strong, they come in and they hit something that's five reps or less really, really hard. One top set, maybe two top sets, and then they just back off. Okay. And this is the point that I have to make here is that this by, it's not just by definition, it's by necessity. It has to be minimalist in volume because there's no way you're going to come in, hit a one rep max squat, and then do that for 25 singles. It's just not going to happen. So I, I know that it sounds like I'm saying, well, well, the only way to get strong is minimalist training or something like that. But it, it it's, it's the, because you can't do high volume at a high intensity. As the intensity goes up, the volume goes down. This is no different than Prilipin's chart. You can look at the percentages and the reps. Well, yeah, sure. I can do high volume at 60% of my one rep max. I could do high volume at 70% of my one rep max. This is not an issue. But as you get into those, you know, intensities that are over 90%, well, you can't sustain it. And this is really back to running. If I run maximally, I'm sprinting, I can only hold that for a short distance. In fact, I can't even hold it for 100 meters. If you were to clock your time on 100 meters, you would notice that even Usain Bolt, even Asafa Powell, Johan Blake, etc., they don't hold that speed. They actually start to slow down. They hit a top speed and they start to slow down. You can't hold your maximum speed for a very long distance at all. But you can hold a slow speed for a long distance, right? Well, the same thing is true if you're trying to hit a max strength movement, max velocity movement, you can't hold that for a long period of time. It's just that simple. Um, and so when you look at these guys, they come in and they hit something really maximal. I mean, it is insane. Like they, they go to another level. You can do the same. Um, it's just gonna be less weight. But the point being that if you wanna get strong and your goal is strength, I'm saying here, this is a video on strength. This is not a video on hypertrophy. If your goal is maximal strength, you come in and hit the heaviest thing you can for you know, one to five reps. And then you do your back off sets. And you don't do a lot of back off sets. You know, this is like Louis speed work, you know, the eight sets of two at a very low percentage, or or you know, you look at Ed's deadlift program, and you back off to I I think it's six sets of three, but it might see it be six sets of two, and, you know, at a very low percentage. Um, that's your speed work, okay? You're pulling it off the floor as fast as you can. That's the velocity component. And if you have a Tendo unit or a Gym Aware or whatever, uh, bar sense, all these different things, you can go ahead and measure your bar velocity. But the point being, that top set where you're pulling your heaviest double, like that is the intensity. You can't do that for 10 sets. You're going to pull that really high percentage for a double, and then you're done with that. Um, and so what I'm expressing here is that if the intensity is high, you are maximizing your strength adaptations, but because the intensity is high, you have to keep the volume down. And so hence, it just ends up becoming minimalist training when you compare it to some type of bodybuilding program, uh, because you can't do the same volume. It really is that simple. So, uh, I realize that I, I, do a very poor job of explaining this compared to Marty. Go read his articles. Um, but I, I wanted to share this because I have found Marty Gallagher to be one of the most useful and most intelligent people um, when it comes to reading his work. Um, it, you just If you're not aware of who Marty Gallagher is, you need to go look him up, read it, and embrace it. And he has a book, uh, The Purposeful Primitive, 
and there are multiple programs in that book. You can do anything from two days a week to five days a week. It explains to you how to structure it, how to break it down. Um, it, it's a fantastic book. You should buy that book. Um, and, and it's, I'll even throw out there Paul Leonard. Paul Leonard has a ton of books. Go read those books. You will get stronger. Train, like it's, it's a strange thing to me, but it isn't when you think about it. Everyone arrives at roughly the same place. It might look a little different, but you'll see very quickly the strongest guys train very similarly, um, or at least they arrive at a similar place um, with their training over time. Okay, so they may have started different. Maybe you started in bodybuilding. Maybe you started in power building. Maybe you started with powerlifting. Um, but it seems to me that the longer people are in this game, they all arrive at the same position where they train less volume and more intensity. So there you guys have it. I hope this is helpful.